Hey guys, I really hope I don't regret putting on mascara for this one because I'm sure you've seen the title and it is about grief and loss, which all of us have experienced in some form or fashion. But this one in particular is for those of us who have lost a parent or parents because I feel like it's a specific type of grief, a specific type of loss. So the reason I'm doing this one today, if you can see, I'm wearing pink because at my school, we're pinking out the school today because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we've been encouraged to wear pink and I decided to get a pink tee and we use a Sharpie to make a little design. It says for mom because gosh, I hope I don't cry. I feel it coming. <laughs> Um, my mom lost her battle to breast cancer and ovarian cancer. She had a nasty multiple forms of cancer in 2020. And I feel like she was relatively young. She was born in 1957. So that would have made her just, she was shy of her, well, she was 62. So she was shy of her 63rd birthday. Um, and I was 35, which is again relatively young to lose a parent some people have lost parents before they were born um, and some people have lost them at a younger age and I know it's different depending on the age you lose your parent but it's still a void that cannot be filled with uh, anything really but God and that's another video I think I'm gonna make at some point is I'm going back into my faith in such a deep real way that I'm probably gonna talk about it a lot on here and I don't want to alienate my viewers but since my channel is authentic to who I am, and that's a big part of my journey, it's, I'm gonna have to, I gotta talk about it. <laughs> it's getting me through. It's a, it's a healthy way of um, getting through this insane life that we're all going through. Ah, oh, so, it, <laughs> I didn't plan this. I have no idea what I'm gonna say. I mean, I've, I've had a few thoughts. Um, but I'm thinking, how, mi how, much, how much details? But I guess going back to the point of, um, I, th I, should, I should finish that sentence. How, how many details do I want to share, right? But going back to that sentiment of nothing can replace a parent, especially, I think, if you were close to them, which I was with my mom, <laughs> even though it, could, it was kind of codependent, <laughs> enmeshment for sure uh, my mom had a lot of uh, unhealed traumas that now that I've healed from things and I've gone to therapy and I've done a lot of inner work I'm seeing things that um, she needed healed that I'm trying to heal now and I'm trying to stop it stops with me um, but it's not easy but I still you still love your parents right even even though they are flawed human beings they they usually do the best they can. And she really loved me and my brother. And now I see that. Because a mother's love is different, right? And if you are a parent, you know this. They love you unconditionally. She was the person I could call whenever and just pour my heart out about anything. And uh, now, thank God, I have my aunt. And she's like <laughs> my surrogate mother. So thank you, Auntie Lil, I love you. For those that do personality typology, she's an INFP, so it's perfect because our personalities are great. We laugh a lot together <laughs> to get through the madness because she's gone through a lot of loss in her life as well, losing both of her parents and, of course, my mom and then her other sisters. Um, my mom had a lot of sisters um, and has a lot of sisters. Some are living and some have passed. But... Uh, yeah, it's just that void that sometimes you want your mom. <laughs> you feel like a little kid. And you're like, I want my mommy. <laughs> Even though you're grown. Just the other day, I randomly had a feeling. It just hit me out of nowhere. I was sad. And I was like, I want my mom. And it wasn't for any reason in particular. It was just sometimes you you want that comfort. I can still smell her and, and, and imagine what it feels like to hug her. Oh, I shouldn't have worn mascara. <laughs> I knew it. I thought I'd be able to get through this one without crying. Huh. I lied to myself. <laughs> uh, so, 
And something I want to shift real quick. There is a video that's been going around the internet that I will post. It's so wholesome and beautiful. From Sesame Street, Andrew Garfield, who plays the second Spider-Man in the film franchise series, lost his mother as well. And he's talking to Elmo about losing his mom in grief. And it is just so beautiful. So I'm going to try to link that because it's just the way his emotional intelligence and the way he expresses it and the way Elmo comforts him is <laughs> just very beautiful. And so we are like little kids. We're still little kids. You guys know this. You feel it inside yourself. We just don't acknowledge it. We, we walk around pretending like, oh, we got it together. We got life figured out. Let's take it seriously. Let's be serious. Nine to five jobs. <laughs> But we all are little children, just in adult bodies. And so grief is, is hard. It's, it's a lot to process. And I'm not a therapist, so I don't have all the answers. Um, but for me, it's been a lot of prayer, a lot of faith in God. She had a huge faith in God. And our stories are similar, so it's funny. <laughs> Because I tend to rebel. I tend to rebel against my faith. I leave it and then I come back and then I leave it and then I come back. Because <laughs> um, I get intellectual too much in my head about things. And when really it comes down to the heart. And it feels good to be at peace. And that's what my faith has brought me a lot of peace that I did not have before. But unfortunately when I lost my mom, I know everyone's stories are different. But I was in a dark place. Uh, as she was going through cancer and I was actually in a narcissistic abusive relationship and I know that word gets thrown out a lot he's a narcissist she's a narcissist narcissism but this was textbook narcissistic abuse <laughs> I had to watch a bazillion YouTube videos to finally get it in my head this is not healthy and I need to get out but because I was in that relationship while she was going through it, I wasn't able to be with her like I should have been or could have been because he was isolating me from her and telling me how awful my family is when they're not awful at all. <laughs> but I believed it. And that really, that's hard to think, gosh, I, I really should have been there more. But I was fighting my own demons, a demon. <laughs> Somebody possessed my demons. Um, I believe, I know some of you are like, okay, Rebecca, stop, stop drinking the Kool-Aid, but no, I, spiritual warfare is real. I feel it. I've experienced it in many forms and fashions, but I was going through that battle also when my mom was going through hers and it was a lot. And you would think after that abusive relationship, that would have been it, right? But no, Rebecca can't learn the first time. I actually gotten something worse uh, down the road. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk about that at some point. But I say that to say sometimes when you lose someone, it's not sometimes. No, it's never the right time, even if you get to say goodbye. Because she did go to hospice, and I did get to see her one last time, but she was not in a good state, so I try not to think about that. Those of you that have had a loved one in hospice, you know. Or that have seen a loved one at the end, it's, uh, that is not how you want to remember them. <laughs> So I want to make her proud and part of this channel is a big part of that. Um, oh, I didn't get to finish. I'm going all over the place. Please pardon me. But she rebelled against her faith. She was one that um, got into some really dark stuff when she was younger. And then she finally turned back to Jesus. And, and that's how her at the end, she was big in her church and... Um, Oh no, it's saying storage low. Oh gosh. Okay, so I have to wrap this up. <laughs> I have to delete some things on my phone. I don't want it to cut me off. But isn't it funny how generations, it sort of repeats itself. But I want her to be proud. I think she would be, knowing that I'm spreading love and faith and hope and peace in a dark world. And if you have a parent that's gone on to heaven, know that they love you and they miss you. And you can talk to them. I've done that before. Oh, goodness. It keeps saying storage low. Okay. I did not want to end it here. But I love you all so much. I am sending you the biggest hug. You are not alone. And um, we're like the orphan crew, right? I, I mean, I still have my dad. But, um, yeah, there's a void there. But I'm praying for you all. I love you all. Please take care of yourselves and each other. 
And uh, if I need to make a part two, I will. But uh, I love you all so much. Please be well. And I'll see you in the next one.